Hello everyone, we are the Nobodies. What are we doing here today? Today we are going to be interviewing Tom, the frontman of Kill Code. This was not an interview we announced previously, so I hope you guys enjoyed the surprise. Um, they are a band from Long Island, New York, where we are, so we got something in common with Well, them. I also have to say some of the members are from New York City. Alright, alright. Yep. So, without further ado, we're going to listen to their song, Kicking and Screaming. Yes. Let's get right into it. I'm son. And I'm father. Looks like a kick-ass tour. Nah, seriously. A lot of people, man. That's some good old rock and roll right there, man. That was a sick freaking intro, too. Yeah. The rock was... and roll was good. It really was pumping you up for something. Yeah, no, and the guitar riff was sick, man. The guitar good riff times, was man. sick. Uh, seeing the airplane, like, just... Like, yeah, the whole the, airplane thing they it's got It's like, it's just about to get started. We're, we they, have, yeah, we're landing now. Yeah. Kill Code is here. Song's definitely about partying. Yes. Well, I've actually seen them, you know, live. Oh, I've nice. been to a couple shows, and uh, they, they, their fans are awesome. They do have a good time. Their fans are loyal, very loyal. Like, they have followers that go from place to place. You know, you could see the same faces at probably 99% of their shows. It's, pre it's pretty cool. Didn't ever expect that you'd be interviewing them, huh? No. <laughs> Not even. Yeah. Pretty exciting.
I genuinely enjoy how the song is more instrument based than it is. Uh, oh yes, they're playing the solos. You yeah. know, the guitars are killing it right now. It's a freaking good, good rhythm. The choruses are freaking amazing. Seriously, this is just a good song. It's yeah. really, you know, it's good. Yeah, absolutely. very good. I could totally see me driving down the highway, you know, with this song blasting. Oh no, 100%. Alright. Excellent, excellent song. So, uh... We are... Let's, uh, let's get right to it. Yeah. I'm super excited about talking to Mr. Tom. Uh, I think we're ready. Yeah, me too. All right, let me uh, give him a ring. Hey, Tom, what's going on, man? What is what's going up? on, guys? Yo, we just heard your song, Kicking and Screaming. Very cool. Wow, what a kick-ass tune, man. You, yeah. It looks like you guys had so much fun making making the video, pretty much. Yeah. Um, it was one of our favorites. Yeah. It, it was a great, great song. And uh, we got a bunch of questions to ask you. And uh, we can we start with saying um, how the band got started? Uh, the band got started. Uh, Chaz and I, uh, guitar, were in a band prior to Coco for a quick minute. Uh, for whatever reason, it didn't work out. And uh, when that happened, we didn't necessarily say we were going to start a new band. We just thought we would jam and write a few songs in his uh, home studio. Uh, and we did that for a couple months. And then we realized after a few songs that uh, we were on to something and maybe we should explore uh, forming a new band and, and that's how that basically got started. Nice, and um, I see uh, you came up obviously with the name Kill Code, so can you tell us a little bit of yeah. how you came up with that name? Yeah, sure. Um, well, as you may know or not, uh, trying to come up with a band name can be sometimes really easy or really hard. Um, in this case, I was just go. I was online uh, in a search engine look, looking for cool names, things I thought, you know, stood out to me and I came across the term kill code which actually is a military term um, it is a term that when the military wants to assess to kill and they want to clear a house after uh, they attacked a certain building or an object uh, they send in the kill code to basically uh, make sure everything is uh, dead and buried um, and I thought it was that was cool we also are big fans of the troops and I thought uh, it was a nice analogy to what we like to do with our music it's um def well, that's a great way to come up with the name. Uh John, you got a yeah. question? Yeah, absolutely. Um has so, the has the band gotten as big as you expected or bigger or has it not even reached where you guys want to go? Um, you know, we really concern ourselves with writing songs and putting on great shows, not necessarily and getting big per se. Um whatever that means. Um we do want to be successful and we are pretty happy so far with where uh the rock and roll road has led us. Um, we've uh, done some respectable shows and put out good releases. Um, so I guess to answer your question, uh, I'm not sure. We're definitely not where we want to be yet, but we are happy where we are at the moment and uh, proud of the, the things we've accomplished so far. Um, our thing is, you know, as long as we are successful enough to continue to be able to do this, um, do it full time, uh, be able to be on the road and keep the machine going, we're happy. Nice. Nice. Very nice. Well, I, uh, you guys just finished a big tour. Um, yeah, well, it was not necessarily. It was basically the last year and a half, close to two years, just touring all over the place. Um, mostly uh, festivals, but we did start it off with uh, doing some East Coast states, supporting uh, Ace Freely, um, who are big fans of Kiss and uh, Ace, of course. Then we went out with uh, Twisted Sister, uh, did a bunch of dates with them on their uh, 40 and Fuck It tour. Uh, then we went out with D on his solo tour, and then we went uh, around the world touring different festivals, uh, France, Germany, uh, a couple times in Germany, a couple times in Mexico, uh, Sweden, London a few times, uh, uh, Switzerland, uh, and basically a bunch of other places I can't even think of right now. <laughs> that's that's awesome. And who, who uh, picked you up? Like who, who picked you up? Like, well, did did a producer come to you? Did a did oh, one well, of the? Actually, um, a big part of the touring and 
um, pretty, pretty much we're a self-sufficient uh, band. Um, we're not any label. We uh, we're, uh, do it all ourselves for the most part. Up until about, I would say about two and a half years ago, we met Danny Stanton, and who is with Collier Entertainment. Uh, he's our manager, and uh, he kind of opened the door for us to uh, take it on the road and take it worldwide. Nice. Up until that point, we pretty much just focused on the East Coast and building a strong following uh, in the New York area, which we accomplished and did pretty well with. And it was time to spread the code around the world, and uh, Danny and Collier Entertainment had been, has a big part in that, too. I love that uh, that uh, logo, uh, you know, spread the code. I love it. Yeah, uh, seriously. Thanks. All right. <laughs> biggest crowd you played for? Uh, the biggest crowd we played for was probably in Mexico, uh, Heaven Hellfest. It was uh, about 75,000 people. Um, it was a... Uh, it was an awesome experience. I think that's the biggest so far, yeah. Do you have any uh, stories from that uh, tour that you uh, remember very well? Um, you know, what's, what's up, what happens on the road stays on the road. Um, but uh, as far as the reception and the crowd, uh, it was amazing. Um, DC Gonzalez, a uh, guitar player as well, and myself, both being Latino, it was uh, an amazing experience to play in front of uh, our Latin brothers and sisters and... We have this thing where we say, when I say kill, you say code. Yeah. And DC uh, did his spiel in Spanish. And uh, to get an awesome response and hear the roar of 75,000 people roaring back at you was just an amazing experience. I can only imagine. I, you know, I hear the same thing from a lot of other people that, uh, you know, sometimes you could look out, you know, as far as you could see and people are disappearing in the horizon. That's got right, 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 to exactly. be some uh, experience. It is, it is. So I guess the when it's definitely you, a bucket list type of thing. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, so I guess the when I say kill, you say code thing is kind of like a way of connecting to your fans because your kicking and screaming music video started that way. Yeah, exactly. That's exactly what it is. It's uh, you know, we like to call our family and our fans and friends the Kill Code Crew, and uh, it's exactly what you said. It's just something that kind of uh, gets everybody involved back and forth, you know, uh, to make it a a good experience for both of us, the band and the crowd. That's great. Do you guys uh, have any uh, plans, uh, upcoming plans for the band? You know, as far yeah, I mean, as uh, we're, always, we're always writing and recording. We uh, just officially, with the record was available last year. Uh, our current release, uh, the answer produced by Joey Z uh, from Life of Agony, uh, was available only at shows and hard copies, limited edition copies on our website. Um, but officially became uh, available on all digital platforms and everywhere um, in February of this year. Um, but with that said, we already started working on the new record. Um, we were already about four or five songs, and we're really excited about it. Um, and we have a show coming up this Saturday, actually, at the Stanhope House in New Jersey. It's a beautiful, old, rustic, with a lot of history uh, venue that we're looking forward to playing, celebrating a promoter we know, Missy Firetag, uh, birthday. Very nice. Uh, we also just booked a headlining show, uh, the Bowery Ballroom in New York City. It's one of our favorite venues, if not our favorite venue in New York City. Uh, headlining that show um, on July 28th. That's that's very nice, and uh, me and my son will be joining you on that show for sure. Yeah, awesome. that's gonna. And then be... once the new record's done, we hope to get back on the road and get it back. You know, get it back out there. Excellent, excellent. If you had um, if you had uh, one thing to tell your fans, you know, uh, anything. If you had one thing to tell your fans, what would you tell them? Um, be real, be honest, and you know. Live by the rock and roll code, you know, and just uh, be real, you know. Just be yourself. Don't try yeah. to be anybody you don't want to be. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. I mean, if you're true to yourself, people will be true to you. You know, that's at least what I think. That's that's a good theory. I've o I've always said that if you're nice to people, they'll be back to you. You know, if you're honest, yeah. they'll be honest back to you. You know, you hope at least. The golden rule. <laughs> the golden rule. Um, what are some of your uh, influences growing up? What are your, what are some of the band's influences? You know that brought you um, to well, the, the music band you play. All over the place. The, uh, we have, of course, we have all similar interests. Interests, um, you know, with metal and classic rock, southern rock. You know, the Staples, Zeppelin, Sabbath, uh, AC/DC, Kiss, uh, Twisted Sister. So we all share that uh, that love of those type of bands. And then we also all come from different uh, backgrounds too. That adds kind of like to our sound. You know, DC is a New York City hardcore guy. Uh, Robbie's, a, you know, more of a West Coast James Addiction guy. Um, Chaz is more uh, Queen and epic guitars, uh, the guitar solo type of guy. Um, 
Smith and Eric Bonesmith is the classic rock southern uh, mixed bag. I like to call him like a jukebox. You know, he can, he can cover anything and sing everything. And then myself, being from New York City uh, back in the day, I'm actually a big hardcore old school hip hop fan. Okay. Not a big, not a big new fan of new hip hop, uh, but old school hip hop is definitely my thing. As well as classic rock, I'm a big uh, Faces fan, Ron Stewart, Joe Cocker, um, The Who, big Who fan. Beach Boys, uh, so it's a big mixed bag, you know. Yeah, that's that's amazing, and you could you could hear it in your music. You know, I've uh, recently I've been listening to a lot of it, and uh, I've right. seen you guys live twice. Um, I was saying in the beginning of the video that I've actually been to a couple of your shows, and how your fans are very very loyal. You know, I was sitting there saying you could go to ten of your shows and you'll see the same faces over and over again. It's excellent. You know, that's that's yeah. awesome. So uh, we're going. Yeah, yeah, no, we're definitely, uh, you know, and anyone out there, any of our subscribers, please listen to, uh, you know, Kill Code. Um, yeah, I'd like to ask, uh, favorite people you've toured with, like favorite band or group that you've ever had uh, the opportunity to tour with. You know, we've been really again blessed with that. I mean, it's been a pretty surreal and amazing experience. Uh, to share the stage with bands like Kiss and Arrow Smith and uh, especially playing the festival circuit you know the beautiful thing I like about the festival circuit is you have such a mixed bag of bands um, and it makes it really an enjoyable experience not only to play but as a fan when I'm there uh, perfect examples like you'd see Sepultura uh, and then you'd see uh, a great Australian band called like Airborne out of Australia right next to Sepultura and then you have uh, you know Kiss go on next and it's just a mixed bag so I would say if I had to pick one band that was, you know, amazing to share the stage with and to play a festival, it would probably be Aerosmith. Yeah, that, that's got to be amazing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Are they as nice of uh, guys as they, you know, seem to be? On, no, on, you know, to be honest, uh, you, got one, those bands, they don't do too much social. Oh, uh, they I, stay behind the closed doors. Did, huh? You know, we did see, uh, and Eric did grab a picture um, with Steven Tyler, and he was a backstage hanging out. But, you know, those guys kind of... You know, as rightfully the show they should you know they stay on their own and they do their own thing so, you know there's other bands that yeah. are very cool like the guys in Sepultura actually were very very cool and had a few glasses of, of red wine with them and had a you know, good time so you met Mr. Derek Green <laughs> yes yeah, good yeah. guy man got anyone we were ready to do our outro yeah well you were an amazing amazing guest today thank you for yeah. joining our Thanks. show and, answered uh, every question. You answered awesomely. every question awesomely, and uh, you know I know your fans and our subscribers, and hopefully new fans to you will, uh, you know, join your code. Yes, yes. Thank you, brother. I appreciate it. Thanks yeah. for having me. All right. So remember to like, comment, and subscribe. Tell us down in the comment section below what songs we should listen to, who you would like to see us interview. Um, and press the subscription button with the little bell next to it to get notified every time we upload a video. I'm Son. And I'm Father. And you are? Tom Morrissey. Spread the code. Nice. nice. Thank you. Rock on. Rock on, buddy. <laughs>